What's up, everyone? So this is the project of Operation Unicorn. This is what it looks like. Pretty, uh, pretty big. The mixer. I used about 50 channels. I'm gonna start with the first break. Uh, for those of you who don't know this track, I'm gonna play it real briefly. So that's uh, Operation Unicorn with a drop like this. Um, so what uh, this track starts with is the melody but slower. It's the same melody as further on in the track, but then it's faster. So it's like uh, doubled, doubled in speed, so to speak. This is a square beat called Exposure Synth, but it sounds very cool. Very, very clean. I like it a lot. My mixer, this is this is on it. The sound goodizer, the reverb is um, from silent. So that's why you hear a lot of reverb. This is how it sounds dry. This is an uh, omnisphere. And it's a choir. Preset, actually. Uh, choir, full ass. It's playing the chords. It's of course also the slower version, so it's like the, the, the drop melody is, is double as fast. So yeah, that's basically everything in there. This, this, this is really important, this uh, WAV file here. What I did is take the first note. Use a lot of reverb. And if you bounce that into a WAV file and then reverse it. And that's like really important because uh, after you go into the break, it leads you to the melody basically. And that's pr a pretty cool effect. So then we go on to the next part in the break. It's basically the same, but some addi additions. And you can feel it's building tension. If I play it and if you listen to it, you, you just get excited for what's coming next. There's a clock ticking and it's going up in volume as you can see. So there's a reverb on that. It's like the default preset and I, I just took down the mix, the pre-delay. And then there's this countdown effect, which is really, really cool. It's only been pitched to the right note because normally it would sound like this. It, it's, it adds a, lo a lot actually, a lot of tension. And of course the organ, the church organ. I think I used one from the contact library. Yeah, it's this one. Organ KH great PR plenum or something like that. I just added some reverb, but there's two and it's because this is the bass note. So that's playing the bass notes of the melody. And then there's the upper notes, so to speak. And they're both on the same channel and there's just a reverb. And then you have all those sounds together with the melodies that we're playing before. And then it builds already in tension. There's some effects there as you can see. What's also building a lot of tension. Here is a cashmere exhaust which I reversed. Then there's uh That's the impact. But I didn't use this impact. I only used the, the first part. And there's like an epic uh, epic movie trailer late zip rise. <laughs> which also has a big boom so to speak in the end. But I also cut that off. Another one from the same uh, pack. It's also just the reversed effect actually. So that. Here's another one which I also cut off. Halfway. So all those kind of things you can combine and um, so that's the second part of the, the break actually. And then we go into the big, the big melody. So it's the same melody but faster and this is one of the synths that's playing the main melody. Very, very distorted. Sorry for everyone's ears. Without effects it would sound like this. And with sound like this. There's a stereo shaper on it. We want it to sound stereo. This is just a preset stereoize 3. It sounds cool because the sound goes to the side a bit instead of in the middle. And there's reverb on it with the default preset. As you can see here, the bass multiplier is turned down. So there's some low frequencies I took out. 
and I turn down the mix and the pre-delay so that's cool but as you can hear I don't use uh, only this sound uh, there's also this sound and, and I think this is the main lead sound it sounds like a guitar almost without all the effects it sounds pretty lame actually when you don't have anything on it so I wanted it to sound more alive so what I did was I added some EQ and it just makes it a little bit more raw-ish a little bit more sharp then there's some reverb on it you can hear there is already reverb on the sound in silent and Valhalla room for reverb again and some more EQ just to take out more low frequencies then there it's it's actually channeled to this uh, to channel 11 routed I have to say you can see that by this little green wire here and basically all the effects apply to whatever's on channel 6 already and then on channel 11 I add a sausage fattener yeah basically only touch the fatness a little bit what it does it makes it more uh, more fat more compressed stands out more in your mix so that sausage fattener just makes it a bit louder as well so that um, then there's uh, this cool little thing uh, which gives a lot of energy under it I really like this uh, the, this sound and the, the way it's played. These are the chords, but then in the beginning I just wanted to do a little different. This, these are just the bass notes. Uh, this synth is, uh, I think the synth me and uh, uh, Martin used in Spotless. Uh, it's ARP 5th Prophet. I think it's also by Vandalism. Just a kickstart for Sidechain, but it, it's not active yet. Because I don't want Sidechain in the break. So I think it's pretty cool and it sounds pretty raw. These are the effects that are on it. Some of the effects you just heard already with the build up towards this part. One is the exhaust by Cashmere, but now it's not reversed. Cashmere white noise. An effect that normally sounds like this. And now it sounds like this. So there's kickstart for sidechain where you can hear it's going like up and down in volume uh, a big reverb i used a preset called ambience and then what i did was the dry i turned 100 percent because i want to hear the original input so the original effect reverb i turned very loud to uh, 40 or 84 percent and the decay is the how long the reverb lasts to 13 seconds that's a very long reverb you have to imagine that 13 seconds is like eight bars almost and that's why it sounds very big and then there's uh eq and there's one preset called 20 hertz and 18 kilohertz cut you can cut them out uh, and this is the high frequencies the 18 kilohertz that's what i did there then there's a uh, impact which is pretty cool just with eq and this is eq1 exhaust another exhaust much in your face but i don't want that so i took out a lot of the low frequencies as you see here with fab fil this is fab filter again so and the stereo enhancer which is basically the, almost the same as stereo shaper uh, but just it sounds a little bit differently so it moves your sound to the sides and then there's one crash the crash is called leno crash fits everywhere and it really does fit everywhere <laughs> Just a simple crash uh, where I took out the low frequencies with an EQ. Yeah, pretty awesome. And then you get this uh, this little change. That's without the melody, of course, with the melody. And there's a clap. Very loud, actually. And I took out the low frequencies, but still there's some left and there's a transient processor on it if a sound begins it has this peak and that's the, basically the the transient the attack and you can boost it with this plugin or reduce it or reduce the or boost the release i took down the release a little bit i can show you the difference if i play this so it sounds a bit shorter if i, I could also do it like this So there you can kind of see what the transient processor does and some reverb on this the reverb on this clap which is a Valhalla room this clap is also pitched up just to get a different sound out of that clap uh, which I was looking for that's basically the the break um, then we go to the build up it's a 
cool little effect here. Really cool sound, but I only used the beginning and I drowned it in reverb. The mix is on 100%, so you don't hear the original sound anymore. You only hear the effect. It's a sidechain, so it also sidechains the reverb. 84%. There's an impact sweep by Kashmir here. Then there's some snares, which are quite aggressive. There's a clap. It's the same clap as before. And there's a Kashmir snare. It's a hard snare. And there's nothing on it but a filter. It's a high pass filter. As you can see, this is set to high pass. It takes out the low frequencies, so it lets the high pass. It will... So you use that, I, I use that towards the end of the buildup where I want all the low frequencies to go out. So the drop with all that bass hits harder. Then there's the, the whooshes, so to speak, make the buildup more interesting. Then this. But you can hear the sound is really moving a lot. First of all, it's building up in pitch channel control channel to note fine pitch building up every note and here it gets faster well then it sounds cool already what i did was added some effects first of all eq take out the low frequencies uh so there's a reverb on this thing pretty big but then sounds bigger it's a pretty messy reverb i took out high frequencies that were annoying me and now the cool uh, thing about this one, I think, is the shaper box. I use the pan effect. It lets you automate your left and right panning of a sound according to the timing of your track. So if you can hear, you hear it goes left and right every two bars. And it's just a really cool addition to, to this build up. You, you, you almost don't hear it, but it adds a lot of energy. Then there's the melody. This. So I didn't show this yet, but this is also playing the leads melody. It's on the same channel as the other lead. And here it's cool because the like one of the melodies stays the same. And then the second melody goes up in up, up with some notes. And then a third melody, which is just this one, plays another higher note. So you have basically chords playing a melody and if you want to do this you got to make sure that the right chord is either major or minor the filter is also active here this filter on channel 11 is controlled by this automation clip it goes down after the, the first part of the break And it comes slowly back up. Explained, I think everything except this little Juno synth riser. I have a Juno 60 here. You can see it on the uh, webcam a little bit. Uh, Juno 60, which is like an 80s plug um, a plug in. I was going to say <laughs> 80s synthesizer. Really cool, really cool sound. And it has this really cool riser effect, which for some reason cuts through all your mixes. So it's, it's definitely helpful in buildups. Even it's so soft, but you can still hear it. it I, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. This is the, the high pass frequency on the snare, which I showed before. So it's, it goes up. Then there's the fill, which is pretty cool. And then you hear the note with the delay. Um, if I turn it off. That's the, the fill. It's a sub drop. Which I cut off at the fourth bar. The cowbell. Then another big snare. And on this snare there is a transient processor. Just makes the attack pop out a little bit more. And makes the, the rest of the snare a little bit less in volume. And there's the EQ. More, normally it has more low frequencies. And now it has also a little bit more mid frequencies. And there's a little vocal. It adds just a lot of energy. It's... And then goes into the drop. Let me turn off the synths. So we, we only hear the drums. 
So this is the overall kick. As you see, it's on channel one and it has a transient processor on it to make the transient of the kick, so the attack a bit harder. It just makes that the top part is just really boosted, but that's why it cuts through the mix a little bit more. These are the claps and snares. A little pre clap from a loop. And only I took only the clap. And this snare is pretty aggressive. Pretty loud, just without the low frequencies. And then we have our bass, or actually there's two kind, kinds of bass here. I used a sub kick sample. From, it's a sub kick sample in different notes. It's basically just the bass notes, F, E, then there's D sharp, and F again. So there's a sample pack which has different sub kicks and different keys. That's playing the bass notes. You can hear there's a, a little breakdown effect. I did that with B Blue Tape Stop, which does the tape stop like on a vinyl record effect. I put the slowdown to 0.17 and you automate the trigger button. See here, this is where it triggers. So that's the, the sub kick. And what's on there is a, uh, a kickstart for sidechain, like the, the, the classic chain, 100%, a uh, little bit of EQ. Here I took out low frequencies on the bass. The reason I did this was because the subkick sample is very extreme when it comes to bass sounds. So you don't want all of your bass in it because you want to keep that for the original kick, like the, the, main, the main kick. And this kick would sound a little bit different. Like there's way more low frequencies without this EQ. And this is like the mid bass frequency, so to speak. And there's a little dip because that's just an annoying little frequency. And I don't want all of that in my mix. Also because I have another bass line, pattern 15, which sounds like this. It's two Omnisphere plugins, soft square bass. It's not on the same channel, but it's the same, almost the same bass EQ. And then there's the other one, which I always call the upper bass. There's like hardly any bass in this. It's the, playing the bass line and it's meant to have that extra raw edge on your bass. And without effects it would sound like a bass. Yeah, normally it would sound like this. I'm gonna go to the effects one by one. Kickstart is for sidechain, also the heavy preset, classic chain. EQ2 taking out more of the low frequencies, but that makes the big, big difference. It's a big difference. Sound Goodizer. The sound is, is actually a uh, multiband compressor with some presets. This is the amount and this is just the basic preset. Pumps up your sound. More EQ, EQ1, taking out the very high frequencies. Tape stop to do that slow down effect again, that final stop effect. And this is stereo shaper and a filter. And then you get the bass. And that plays the exact same uh, bass line as the stop kick. And then we add our melody, melodies. It's the same sounds as in the break. And there's a little hi-hat which is added, which is the, the, the loop. Well, I use here only the clap in the beginning. And then I use the hi-hat from that loop as well. So, but then there's nothing playing the chord yet. Turn the melody off real quick so you can hear what I did. Pretty cool, I think. And it's actually a, uh, a sample, a vocal single A. Ah. If I wouldn't have anything on it, it would sound like this. And that I turned into chords. I did that with manipulator. First thing I did on a manipulator is the alternator set to 12. The alternator makes your the voice sound kind of like robot already. So, so it's already sounding like a way cooler sound, I think. There's a sound goodizer, a space modulator, and it is like a um, flanger kind of flanger plugin. Chorus and flanger, it's a bit of a weird effect. It sounds pretty cool for this one. Stereo Shaper, kickstart for sidechain because it's, it's chords playing in a drop. Reverb, 
default preset by Valhalla Room added it like this. An SMEQ because it's a lot of low frequencies in there and I don't want that so I take them out. But then it's not playing chords yet and that's what I want. So what I did was um, the manipulator. You can in Fruity Loops, this works for every, like also in Ableton probably and uh, Logic and stuff. But in Fruity Loops, you have to link the MIDI to the input port. And here the input port, if you can read it, it's set to zero. And then my MIDI out into the manipulator, which the port is set to zero. These are the chords again, and then it will play those chords. So that's pretty cool. It's a really cool way to make your own instrument with a voice. And then I added uh, this Sonic Synth 2, which is an organ. Also playing the chords. And what is on there is kickstart for the sidechain. And it's what you mostly want to do is keep your sidechain the same for every instrument. So everything sounds in the same groove. Stereo Shaper as well, and a filter, and the cool thing about these two chord instruments, they're linked to channel 28, and there's a filter on that. But there's an automation on the filter, like this. Making the filter go open when the instrument starts every time. And there's an automation for the manipulator, which is on the voice I just showed you, and it's on the formant. As you can see, if you can see here, you can see exactly what an automation clip does, is I draw on it like this. And here you can see what that does. So Together with the filter, it gives a really cool effect and it makes those chords really move. There are some just two cool instruments and a couple things I didn't show yet. That's the second part of the drop. This is Siren Synth, Somnia Sweep Mellow, and this is what it plays. You can hear the notes really glide into to each other, and that's on silent, that's with the portamento button. You can adjust how fast it glides from one to note to another. And there's a lot of reverb on it, like without reverb and stuff it would sound like this. Way too present, and I wanted a little bit lower in volume and way more reverb. So this is on it, the sound goodizer. Reverb, another reverb, but with a low cut. So it cuts out the frequency until 740 hertz from the reverb. So it's uh, the low frequencies of the reverb are out. Kickstart for sidechain and a sausage threatener to make it a bit more compressed and distorted and make it pop out in the mix. So that's what you hear here. <laughs> Then there is a right and an open hi-hat. So that gives you more energy, keeps it more interesting, those added melodies. This is the, the Tuinsproeier synth, <laughs> the garden hose synth. I call this because as you can see here with Synth Master, it had, has two layers. So if I turn layer two on, that's the white noise you hear. This is like a garden hose. This is the ARP, but I turned that off and I only used the garden hose sound. And of course we have this fill here, which is a synth mess, I think. Playing the first part of the melody with a reverb. And it's cool because it like goes from a heavy drop into the only this sound, you know. And the lead comes filtered in with this. Automation clip, as you can see at the end of this part, the low cut filter goes down. And it comes back in and then it's just a, little, a cool little fill. That's important to keep your drop interesting. Then we go to the second break with this harp. Very dreamy and I really like the, the notes on this one. Normally it's like this. Fab filter Pro Q to take out any of the low frequencies. There's a filter because it comes up in the break. So 
and a Valhalla room for reverb and it's set to 100 mix. Then there's a choir. It was also in the first break, but I didn't show it. From a boys choir, it's a soloist boy singing ah with delay on it. But this is Valhalla delay and it's a preset for a reverb. But with delay, you can also create reverb as shown here. Really cool. As you can see here, a lot of things I did with the frequencies. Um, because a lot of those notes were annoying me a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I showed this in other live streams and episodes. This pep filter, you can see what's going on with the EQ. And what you can do is you can, you can make a new parameter. And if I were to narrow the band, you can see if I press here, the band is the, the, those little two uh, stripes. And I can make it wider. But the cool thing is I already showed you with this little headphone, you can play only that band. And then you can hear like, oh wait, you go through the frequencies and you think like, what frequencies is bothering me? Let's take it down a little bit. And here I did it very extreme, you see. It works together well with this whole vibe. The choir is back in there. So yeah. There comes the organ, there comes the melody. And then we go back to the build up and then we drop again. After the drop, we just play part of the drop, but without the, the main melody. We have the intro and outro. It's pretty basic, pretty straightforward. One thing I didn't show you guys yet is my ma master chain and 